Well, today's the day. We're finally going to put some bees into this side stocking hive. Stick around. We'll have some fun. <laughs> Well, hey guys, been a little while since I've shot a video, as I'm sure some of you have noticed. Just life gets in the way, things get busy, stuff happens. Um, finally going to put some bees into this today, but I thought before I get into that, I better give you an update on what's been going on in the bee yard, because I'm sure people are going to ask, uh, how was my winter? My winter was bad. Um, my winter losses were very heavy this year. Oh well, that sucks, but it's part of the game, right? Uh, I think in the main bee yard, I had two out of maybe 20 that survived. Uh, upstairs the nukes, I had two out of 30 that survived. Um, treated for row of mites, kept track with the alcohol watch. I don't think that was that big an issue. Um, and, I'm, and I'm not the only one. Judging by the amount of people that phoned me looking for bees, uh, things were pretty bad up here this winter. Uh, I don't know too many people that didn't lose bees. And several people lost all their bees. So it wasn't good. Uh, everybody's got a theory, of course. Welcome to beekeeping. Uh, mine is lack of cleansing flights. I do keep pretty close track. Um, in the fall, when I see them flying, I always write down the date. And the next time I see them fly, I scribble out that date and write the new date. Um, it was mid-October this year that they were out and about. Uh, early November, first week of November, I believe, we had snow. And that snow stayed till the end of April. Um, wasn't colder than usual. I mean, we had a dozen nights with minus 30 Celsius. Damn chilly, but not that bad. And where the nukes were, of course, it wasn't cold. So I don't fully believe cold was the issue, but certainly lack of cleansing plates. Um, most of the time my bees get out a little bit in November, not this year. Uh, only once in 14 years I've seen them out in December. So not seeing them out isn't a big whoop. They certainly didn't get out this year. I have never seen my bees out in January. Most years, probably two out of three, I'll see them out a little wee bit in February. Didn't happen this year. Um, March, every single year since I've had bees, I always see them get out a few days. Didn't happen. I think March 20th, it got up to about plus five or six, if I remember right. The sun was out, but it was a cold wind blowing. I sat out here for quite a while watching. Of course, there's still tons of snow out here. Um, I saw a few water bees come out. The snow is melting on the roofs of the hives, and they're getting a little wee bit of water. And I went around with the stethoscope at that time, and a good number of them were still, still humming. Uh, the first really good day we had was April 10th. I haven't done the math, but... Say October 20th to April 10th, I have no idea. That's a long time to not get a cleansing flight. And by April 10th, I actually thought they were all dead. But a week later, I saw a couple flying. Anyway, it is what it is. Am I happy about it? Of course not. Am I going to cry about it? Of course not. Uh, I always say, beekeeping is just a game for me. Um, and you know what? If you don't have the odd crappy year, then you don't appreciate the good years. So anyway... That's that. Whatever. I've got uh, nukes on the go. And actually, there's another thing right now. It is cold. It's, uh, I think today's July 9th. I've made some nukes. They're going inside tonight. It's supposed to be 8 or 9 degrees uh, Celsius tonight. And it's been cold all through June. Uh, my first batch of nukes I made, four of the queen cells froze. It, I wasn't paying as good attention as I should have, I guess. And it got down a little chilly. And there weren't enough bees in the nuke to keep those cells warm. So it hasn't been a great, it wasn't a great winter and it sure as hell hasn't been a great summer so far. I haven't had summer, but warm today by my standards. Um, but yeah, it's been crappy, crappy year all around for the poor girls. <sighs> all right, that's that. Let's get on to some fun stuff. Um, the last video I posted, and I'll leave a link in the description, was I'm playing around with this idea. It started with that Thomas Nuthive and it's kind of been evolving. Um, I'm trying to come up with some way that I can access the brood nest at any time I want without fooling with the honey supers. Um, in that video back, I think that was in February, I had made a version 2, what I called a version 2, a version 3, and a version 4. This is version 4. Version 3, I don't think the camera sees, it has a queen from my first cell builder. Um, they're not moving over at all in that one yet, but it's a very, very small population in there. This little Luke right here is actually the queen that came out of my second cell builder, and I had a peek in it a couple days ago. They're not doing anything in the upper box. There's four frames of bees, or probably three frames of bees in the bottom one, but it's supposed to rain for the next two or three days, um, and I got some stuff going on next week. So I thought 
I would try and get these girls into here today. Okay, real quickly, for those of you that didn't watch that video, um, this side is going to be for the honey supers, and this side is the brood nest. Um, I've got a little triangle-shaped migratory cover of some sort, I guess, there. I've got an inner cover that I have blocked the three vent holes, and then I took the router and I took away, there's, there's a three-eighths gap here underneath the inner cover. I, I took that away. Um, like I said, these ten frames are going to be for the brood nest. And then there's an opening here that goes in, and there's a queen excluder there. It goes into a second deep, and then I will be able to put some honey supers on here. There's an inner cover, vent box, and roof. And the entrance, the entrance is down over here. This box, let me dig down into there real quick. No propolis, just paint. <laughs> this box here is solid. It's got a solid bottom. It's just a hollow box. Um, this floor is almost identical to a standard North, North American style floor, I guess. The landing board's going to be here. The bees can go under. I've got a, uh, I got a uh, entrance reducer on there, but the bees will pass underneath this box and back into the brood nest. 10 frame. I've got a couple frames of honey here. There's eight frames there, so they're going to go in here. And they can pass under here. There's a three quarter inch spacer here. That queen excluder goes here. Then I've got a, a deep there that right now there's already 10 frames in there. And they're three quarters filled with honey. This, like I say, so far this spring has been horrible. That's not a very strong colony. Um, uh, they've got six or eight weeks to get ready for winter. <laughs> I'm already thinking about winter. And with all the dead oats, I got more honey than I know what to do with. So I'm giving them 10 frames that are fairly full. I, I probably will throw a honey super on there just to give them a little extra space. Then as I mentioned in that other video, the idea is come fall, um, I'll put down a regular floor here and put the brood nest on it. And then I'll just take that 10 frames, which should be all honey, and put on top, wrap, and then I'm ready for winter, other than treating. Uh, I'll leave a link to that video, and uh, I'm, I'm, maybe in that other video I explained it a little bit better. So, I think all I'm going to do is move that off of my concrete slab and move this over. And then we're just going to transfer some bees into here, and I'll get the other camera going, and we'll have a look and see what they look like. I have had a feeder jar on them, but uh, they aren't taking much. I don't know. I haven't. I had a peak the other day, uh, but I didn't actually pull frames out and see what's going on. So maybe I'm in for a surprise. Hopefully not a bad one. We'll see. We'll see. Let's get this off the stand. Get it out of my way. Uh, I think I'm just going to put them right there. And then let's... Uh, Put that there, and then the brood nest goes at the back, and then this spacer box goes on next. that and then actually so this this box already has like I say 10 frames it's quite heavy it's gonna go there and that's just a um, I gotta put a bead of caulking along there that's just to help to shed the water away I could put honey super on there, but I'm certain that I don't I don't need to do that right now. I'm gonna put two frames in here with a little wee bit of honey. Uh, okay. Let's 
see if I can't adjust that close-up camera. All right, I got the smoker here if I need it. Uh, like I said, I looked in here two, three days ago. They weren't doing anything in this upper box at all. I got just a just a few bees wandering around. So let's just, they got some honey in this one. I'd probably give them that though. Put that to the, we'll put that out there. So this is just a pretty decent frame. It's drawn and clean. And I may, I may shuffle shuffled some of these brood frames around again it's going to be cold here still at night time so i don't want to split the brood nest too much and this is going to be so simple to come back in here in a week i don't have to take any of that apart this is the whole idea behind this ah. nothing to speak of another frame of honey so i might uh i might end up coming back in here and taking some of these full frames of honey and throwing them up there. But for now, we're just gonna leave them here. All right. Very, very, very low numbers here. Just a handful of bees. Where's that camera? Just a handful of bees running around there. Those cells are actually polished though. So maybe they're maybe they're looking to make a place for the queen. And this next one, I can see brood here. Yeah, this side too. So where I make that communication hole, they've got a little wee bit of uh, drone brood there but the rest of that that's pretty flat pretty nice looking brood same thing on this side a couple drones running around a couple drones emerging and I do see a few larvae there and that comb that they got on the bottom there's plenty of space underneath there I'm going to leave that gives them a way of climbing up off the bottom because there's a three-quarter inch gap down there and there's our queen uh, where is she should be in that camera it's last year's queen of course and this has got uh, yeah there's eggs there's eggs out through here across there there's larvae there so she's she's working I'm gonna turn this around because this side this side here is just nectar. This side she's got laid up and that next frame's got brood. And like I say, it's gonna be cold here. So I don't want to, and, and the population's very, very low in this right now. I don't wanna split this at all. And this frame, this is just a drawn frame, but uh, this side's got some old honey in it. So I'm just gonna turn that. And then bring these over. So I probably will be doing some manipulating with this, well, all summer long. Um, possibility I'll pull some of the honey out of here and put it up there um, and put some other drawn frames. I got quite a stack of clean drawn frames. As, as that brood nest expands, I'll split it and drop a frame of, I'll try and find her some really nice stuff that she can get on right away that they don't have to waste time cleaning it. So then this inner cover with the, with the notch that I have, going to line up with that opening so they can get up into there if they choose to. That goes onto there. And then my little roof sits underneath there. I had purposely put this nuke here with the entrance flying west because I was planning to do this and I have another one back there and two more over on the far side so is that I wasn't confusing them. Um, I think I mentioned in that other video that I would prefer them all to fly south I have these stones lengthwise east-west. So for now, 
that's going to go that way. If this works and I build more on the stone behind me, I'll have it flying east so that I can work the two colonies from between it, and then the next one would fly west and east, and so on, so on. So anyway, yeah, add a honey super, just simply lift that set up and put it in there. But now anytime I want to work this, check that. If there's bees in there, lots of they'll just lay it out in front. Anyway, all I gotta do is pull that off, set that there, crack the inner cover free, and I'm, I'm, I'm at the brood nest. If this works, it is gonna make my life so much easier. Um, I think, I think in that other video, I had said that version two was my favorite. Uh, version two still is my favorite because it's um, the least amount of unique equipment. It's a floor and uh, the migratory cover, I believe, and I don't think I had to do anything else. I've had some time to give it some thought and thinking about the bees. This version is probably the one I think has got the best chance of working because the heat and the pheromones from the brood nest is gonna naturally go up through and then out through the vent that way. Um, time's gonna tell. Uh, you know, I'm not a fool. I realize that this population is extremely weak. Um, this summer it may not be a really good, a good year to be testing this. May have to wait till next year. Um, yeah, that's that. I will do my best to bring you back as the summer progresses. And while on that topic, a little bit of YouTube housekeeping, I guess, whatever it is. Um, those of you that regularly watch my channel, you've probably noticed that I'm not posting videos on any kind of regular format anymore. Uh, that could change. Um, just really haven't had the desire to do it. So, if you haven't subscribed and if you haven't clicked that little bell, you might want to consider doing that. That way when I do post a video, you get notified about it. Um, apparently it's free. <laughs> um, and other videos. Um, so in that, that previous video, I had made version two, three, and four, this being number four. After that video, I made version five, six, and seven. Five is a variation of this, a uh, long time viewer of the channel, Show Me Bees, had suggested that I make that box a little bit narrower and then bring this box over top this. I had to make a unique inner cover uh, and I believe I had to make a different roof. It just gives a, a bigger gap for the bees to go up. I intend to put it in a nuke that's back there. Um, version six is a variation, a combination of two and three put together. Three, like I say, it's got bees in. I could possibly show you that. And then seven, version seven, I guess it is, is a variation of, that's a long hive. I don't have any bees in that right now. I have wintered bees in that in the past, but I haven't used it in a few years. Uh, there's a few things I don't like about it. So I looked at those problems and I looked at some of the problems I see with this and I made version seven. So if you're interested in seeing those, leave me a comment, let me know. Um, if not, that's fine. But if you're, if you're interested in seeing this kind of foolhardy carrying on, whatever, uh, leave me a comment, let me know. Click like, subscribe, share, help the channel out. Uh, I appreciate it um, and yeah, don't know when the next video is going to be, but uh, subscribe, click the bell, then you'll know. Other than that, thanks a bunch, guys. Appreciate your time. You guys be good to your bees. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be good to you. Talk to you soonish, I hope. Bye.